Hey guys, it is 12.17 p.m. on May 10th, 2020. Um, been busy the last few days, not only with trading, but uh, my son was in town. Try to get a stream going on Twitch with some live trading on Friday at 2, but he came late, so um, we just put together some new monitors, um, upgraded the <clears throat> computer we had, so we've been a little bit busy. Unfortunately, I apologize, but just to review some of the stuff that we were looking at last week, and um, I'll probably get into details later, but um, what I'm expecting this week, S&P 500, I believe, we're on the last leg here before we um, pull back for a correction, and I'll have to analyze the correction when we pull back um, to see if it's going to be the beginning of something bigger to the downside, or we're just making a little bit of a consolidation move in the overbought um, situation that we're in now. Obviously, we're coming into the exponential moving average on the 200 we had some price rejection before there's nothing to say that we can't push through it um, but there are some concerns i believe that 284 is on the, or 294 is on the table um, but if you look at the angle of these let's start with the angle of these waves this this first leg up had a pretty sharp angle back retracement got a little bit overextended on this leg up with the gilead news i believe we should have pulled back on this candle and then it popped and then it kind of wanted to retest the top channel before it pulled back again. So you have this wave here pretty sharp, a little less sharp with some sideways consolidation, even a, a more sideways angle, and this one even has less of a pitch to it. So we're probably losing some strength on the McClellan Oscillator. I wanted to see a little bit of um, a bounce off the trend line here. Um, so we're probably going to put in another lower low on the top. So this, all these indications tell me that we're running out of steam here in the short term whether that turns into something more ominous to the downside and correlates with um, some probably negative news going into the next quarter's earnings. You know, it depends on the time frame. But I didn't want it to see us uh, dip down here on the McClellan Oscillator. I wanted to see us curl, and we expected a bounce. Well, we got the bounce in the market when I told you to buy the 279s. Buy the hell out of the 279s. I actually did not expect us to get up to um, 294, which we're coming into. I thought maybe 288, so we've we've act, outdone ourselves on the upside, <clears throat> but the the broader averages are, are weakening a little bit here, and we're probably being held up by some of the uh, major stocks. We do have a nice little touch and go on the MACD curling to the upside, um, and a little bit of divergence on the RSI, which tells me a little bit of a red flag. We're probably going to see some type of a pullback correction, um, if not Monday, then probably. Um, depending on how we how we break into the week, um, I'd like to see us up a few days, and it might make for a nice short setup um, with a obviously a, a risk reward ratio on the high end. Um, and I'm looking for maybe we can get into this candle here on SPY, and I don't want to pick on SPY for for shorting. I'm almost inclined to to short the financials through FAZ. Or just simply shorting the uh, the XLF, which has been a very weak sector. I don't really know that I want to pick on SPY. I may, um, or I might go SQQQ, but we're definitely overbought. Um, what I believe the, the way it correlates with the economy. Um, you know, we ha we've had the fear stage, and you have your FOMO stage, and you have you know a little bit of a head fake here, um, crushing the bears, and probably had a little short covering. And now you're getting into a little bit of a greed phase here. So we talked about the correct channels on the market that I believe a lot of guys were drawing this chart like this and then said we had we had broken um, when we hit this little level right here. Some guys drew a chart like this and said the, the top was narrowing and we had broken when we hit this line here. And I said, no, that's not true. We're going to bounce off my channel line, which we did. Um, and now I believe that we've actually gone from a different trajectory that I just showed you more into a sideways consolidation trajectory like this with your top, top channel being something more like this. So we can remove some of these right here to kind of clear things up. And we're only looking at the S&P 500 now. There's some individual stocks that I think look interesting. A um, little concerned about our, our Bitcoin over the weekend. I'm not a huge proponent of Bitcoin and all the fundamentals of it. I just like the chart and it turned out to be right. We made a, you know, 50% move on it. Um, I don't know if we're going to, on our GBTC, we might come in Monday morning. We'll be looking at the nines. Um, why is that doing that? I don't know. 
So not a big deal. We'll see how it reacts. Um, maybe it's a buying opportunity. DraftKings got a pullback earnings this week. Probably a little bit of uh, trepidation ahead of that. Obviously, no sports have been uh, have been active. Why is there a bunch of different trend lines for two? I don't know, but you get the idea. So I think this is our our, our consolidation. I'd love to see a move up to the top of this candle here on SPY, and I'd start just probably scaling some shorts. Um, I might have to do them in in two or three increments. But the high of this candle was two ninety eight um, on SPY. But we'll have to see how that looks. Um, that would also put us to the high of this channel. Um, and then with the divergence I'm seeing in some of the um, in the RSI and the McClellan oscillator, it tells me we're just running out of juice here a little bit and it's time for a pullback. The correction would probably take us back to 283. So you might have 15 points in the SPY to the downside. 283, 284, once again on the lower channel line. Obviously, it's nice how it correlates to the 50-day moving average on this one. Um, so we're expecting that pullback to occur. Um, QQQ would probably do the same thing. The price points obviously are a little bit stronger on QQQ, but nevertheless, we're, we're seeing some market um, breadth start to deteriorate a little bit. And uh, not a big concern. Not a, I'm not expecting a giant, you know, this type of deal um, like everybody else is talking about. Once they stop talking about it, then it'll probably happen. Um, so we can we can look at some of the <clears throat> market psychology. The put to call ratio is a little bit more bullish than I want to see. Last time we had it that bullish, I think we were probably up in this area here. So a lot of things um, are starting to deteriorate on the risk to reward ratio where the market's at right now. I've been lightening up on positions. Um, we had a beautiful move in our KTOS pick that we had um, on earnings. We blew through the top channel. Everything looked fantastic there. I might have to sell this, unfortunately. We did clear some overhead resistance here, though. We're inside this downdraft candle. So I, I really want to buy and hold some of these. You know, we were buying this in the 12s and 13s, and now to have to let them go, um, I just think the overall market is a little bit of a concern here. And if I'm wrong, um, that's fine. I can adjust my, my strategy on the fly there. And then our GTBC, which has been, um, or GBTC, I believe it is, which has been rocking and rolling. Um, got above my Fibonacci retracement. Maybe it wasn't completely accurate. Um, actually, we closed right on it, so maybe it was. And then we're just getting some energy pull back here. I'm worried we're headed back down into this um, pivot break point. Maybe somewhere along the 50-day moving average. Um, actually, the 200-day moving average, which would be around 9 and change. But we'll see how that plays out. <clears throat> it could be one of those buy the rumors, sell the news type things. So you got my take on the SPY. Um, kind of flipping a little bit more inclined to short moving into this week depending on how we act um, obviously if we're down Monday morning I have to change my strategy and then we'll look into some different earnings um, here's my volatility Fibonacci fan that I've been using interestingly enough we literally um, hit the lower fan um, number like to the penny on Friday which could be a little bit of a concern that, that we're going to this is actually something to watch here. If we start to trail below this number, um, then we're going to be heading into, into complacency. Um, and that, that, that should be interesting. But if this starts to roll up here like it did in this area here where I said if you wanted to buy volatility like, like VIX, uh, TVIX or UVXY, you buy it when VIX goes between 30, 50, and 30, 80. And that call was, was actually pretty nice. But we couldn't get above the um, descending trend line on the top. Um, here that kind of demarks the, the, the changes in direction. It went up through there. Not that I want to use moving averages on the VIX, but it tagged the 50 and then had big rejection and failed miserably, dropping below the nine-day exponential. And then it's been nothing but down since then. And if you look at the angle um, on the MACD, it looks like we're going to break through there unless something changes because we do a touch and go, no crossover, and we have expanding volume to the downside. So uh, Monday should be interesting if... I'm, watch, I'm going to be watching volatility for sure to see if it holds while the market is still strong. That'll be a little bit of a concern that a correction is definitely coming, some type of a pullback consolidation, um, maybe more, but we'll have to gauge it as we go. Um, so that's my take right now on the market. Some interesting stocks out there. Obviously, we played the, uh, I forget what it was, the, the IPO, that wasn't it. 
on uh, on Monday that worked out well. Oh, this chart actually looks interesting. But we'll get into more details this weekend. I just want to give you my take on the SPY. Moving into this week, they're definitely very cautious, expecting a pullback. Um, on a time frame, I would say the market runs out of gas on Thursday or Friday, but I'm not going to tell the market what to do. I'm just making predictions. You know, This is how I strategize and based on my, my wave counts and my um, whatever little psychological twist add into the market. Um, so that's my thoughts, and we will recollect later today and bring out another video probably with some different picks and stuff like that.